execute because that's the only way that you're ever going to get through, right? For my partner, that's also what I want to have. I want to have depth in knowing her, really knowing her, and she knows me, you know, and having that connection, I think is the most important thing for a relationship for me. If somebody isn't analyzing not just your blood work, but your symptoms regularly, it could, you know, kill you. But if you have something in your house that you shouldn't be eating, get that out of your house as soon as possible. And that goes for anything if you just want to eat healthier. Don't have junk food in your house. We're back, fam. It's Nathan and I in a new little location. And uh, that new location is my house, the exact same location we've been in. We just relocated like five steps away because to be honest, I feel like this is a this is a better vibe, I think. Yeah. I feel this vibe more because I feel like I'm more attentive. I have a table where I can like set up my drinks and just like, I act like I'm like I'm here to do some work. You yeah, know what I mean? it's more natural. There's a nice distance it's a little, between us. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's a little it's more like natural. Yeah. Well, I also like the vibe of like sitting on the couch because I thought it was chill. But yeah, I don't know something about this. Like when I'm doing a podcast, I like to be fasted. I like to be in a fasted state. I like to make sure I got my like morning freezing shower in. Mm. I like to make sure that I'm very clear headed and uh, you know like I'm drinking, you know, the super carb <laughs> drink so that way I have like glucose still running through my brain especially when i'm like dieting so hard like this mm. so i feel like it does make an impact the location the setting that you're in wherever you're working so i find like i like to i've been like traveling to different coffee shops recently yeah. here in san diego before i leave because i'm like thinking dude this place is beautiful and i've never once like truly absorbed everything yeah until now yeah I think it's it's more so the spaces that you associate with certain habits. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people when they go to their bed, they get really tired instantly because they're used to sleeping there. If you're in your bed and you, you work around, you do whatever, yeah, there's dude. different expectations. Right. So people go to coffee shops with the expectation of I'm going to work and they get less distracted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It feels good. Yeah. It feels like uh, gives me those feelings back in like college yeah. when I just the whole day I was just planning for like today I'm literally going to be on the computer mm -hmm. literally going to be on the chalkboard the entire time just focusing on studying this one subject yeah like it was a feeling to it like drinking that cup of coffee or even taking like my prescription Adderall medication at the time mm -hmm. it was a, it's just like it had like this really nice feeling of like I'm gonna get shit done bro like yeah I'm going to come out of this stronger I'm gonna come out of this like mentally um more I don't know <laughs> mentally more tough and more disciplined mm -hmm. I don't know, it's just a good feeling get shit done tangents anyways so Nathan and I thought that we would uh come back and like just catch people up on our lives talk a little bit about like what uh, what we've been up to and what we've been uh going through recently mm -hmm. and uh I guess also just some of like the, the lessons we've like learned while we were going through these things but i don't know i just wanted to shoot the shit and yeah. talk about shit yeah it was a good time yeah going off that uh going off that subject that we were just talking about earlier i do want to say like i actually have been uh working really hard to come off my prescription medications like adderall um in the last year and i think it's been like really effective yeah and now instead of like taking like the whole 20 milligrams that I used to, if I take any at all during the day, I will literally break it into eighths, which yeah. is like really hard. Cause then you have to break it into a quarter and then you have to break that quarter again. And then I'll take no more than a quarter of a pill an entire day. And I find that that's actually so much more effective for me and mm -hmm. made me think that like, dude, I feel like a lot of the doctors don't really spend enough time really trying to make sure that they have the, their, their, um, prescribing the correct dose of these medications to their patients mm. um, unless you're like part of an hrt clinic like most of the time if the hrt clinic actually cares about its patients it'll cons consistently check up with your blood work to make sure that your your um, testosterone is within a reasonable range and that your symptoms that you're feeling from that level of testosterone is all good symptoms yeah. all stuff that you want to feel right yeah um but then you go to like the doctor and get prescription medication and they just write you off for like oh you'll do this yeah and then maybe sometimes they'll be like uh do you feel any like crazy shit do you feel any whatever mm -hmm. and the thing is a lot of the times most of these people don't really know what to compare it to yeah right they're like oh i feel this and i feel that but like sometimes they're just they expect to like oh maybe i'm supposed to feel a little bit of anxiety when i'm coming up on adderall like mm -hmm. i've heard everyone talk about that like everyone seems to you know it's a stimulant so of course my heart's going to be racing a little bit harder mm -hmm. but then you don't realize that the effective dose for you could actually be different yeah 
That's true. I think it's a very subjective thing for mental, you know, mm-hmm. if it's an HRT clinic, you can read on paper. It's very specific. You know, yeah. you're, there's a reference range, all that stuff. Right. It's kind of a hard play because a lot of the times, you know, you're taking something, even if it's something like Adderall, if you feel good, you're like, oh yeah, this is working, you know, and Adderall is definitely a fine line for where you're doing it recreationally as opposed to productivity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's definitely a fine line, but yeah, I think, you know, doctors are kind of just like, sometimes it's more so just like cookie cutter cut and paste type thing, you know, cause they have so many clients. There's so much back work. There's so much time they have to put in each one. It's hard to be so attentive to each person. Yeah. Most definitely. Yeah. But I've been feeling that, uh, doing the, the, I've been listening to a lot of Andrew Huberman and I find that doing my, like trying to ensue my natural dopamine and, um, and <laughs> dude, I can never say it, bro. Uh, the, the word for adrenaline and, and, an, and an ed, and an ed, and the endocrinology. Oh, no, 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 no. And, oh, um, and, and nep, and then there's nor and nep, nor, 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 nor epinephrine, nor epinephrine yeah. and epinephrine. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That shit's so hard, bro. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost as bad as a, um, science for the gut biome, like all the different types of bacteria. They don't have any, uh, they don't have any, um, acronyms yeah. made up for any of that. Yeah, you have pronunci- to see the entire thing. Those pronunciations Back of are freaking crazy. Neck, neck dust. Yeah. <laughs> nah, it's nuts. But, uh, yeah, like I'll, I've been waking up in the mornings um, and immediately trying to step outside mm-hmm. and actually look at the sunlight for yep. like 50 minutes. So I'll like do my morning cardio by just going outside and like doing a walk. And then if there's hills, I'll do periodic sprints. Um, and I literally feel mm. happiness. I literally feel my happiness rising as I am doing that. It's crazy. It's crazy yeah. to think because if I start my day inside versus like walking outside and looking at the sunlight, I have this, uh, this like constant sort of cabin fever mm-hmm. that just remains there the entire time. Yeah. Um, and even if I get sunlight later on in the day, it's not the same as like getting it instantly that morning. Mm-hmm. Then the moment I come back, put the heater up a little bit cause I know I'm going to be freezing cold and I jump in the freezing cold shower, keep it as cold as possible until, uh, until I'm finished showering, come out and I, dude, it's crazy, man. I feel fucking amazing. It's crazy how, how, how amazing I feel. Yeah. That's, that's really hard rooted into just, you know, living quote unquote ancestrally, you know, cause if you think about it for the majority of our population, our evolution, I mean, this is such a recent development, just having, you know, an actual society where you're living in a house, just, just staying in a house for like the entire day. I mean, that's usually not how it works, you know? You have to go out, you have to provide, you have to catch food, eat co- eat food, cultivate food, whatever it is, you're outside immediately. Right. You know, really when you're inside, it's just for nighttime when it's dark. And then once it's sunlight, you're not really staying inside like that. It's, it's a different dynamic. Uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, I, I thought it would be super cool that like, I always felt like in this day and age, maybe we could like overcome that. Like I always thought that the little cool animes of like nighttime Tokyo, like people just like vampires only up during the night. Yeah. Speeding in their, um, what is it? What is that thing called? I can't ever think of anything. (laughs) I'm so, I'm so bad with like words and communication is the number one thing that I want to improve on. Yeah. Um, uh, fucking the speed racer. Okay. Have you ever seen that anime? No, no, it's like super old and super old. Yeah. But I always thought that was like the coolest vibe. That's why I have that, uh, tapestry yeah. where the, uh, um, little cyberpunk yeah. vibes. Cyberpunk. Right? Yeah, yeah. 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 I always remember thinking as a kid, like how cool would that be to like have a life like that? That'd be super yeah. sick. Cause I was always nocturnal. Yeah. But now like living my life on a daily basis as I do, mm. uh, bro. Like I feel like absolute dog shit. If I don't like, yeah. if I don't, if I don't try to, uh, live with my natural circadian rhythm, mm-hmm. you know, you can't fight the it. brave life isn't easy. Yeah. I mean, it's, if you think about it, it's like your finite 80 years of existence as right. opposed to, you know, 
hundreds of thousands of years of evolution that's brought you to this point. You mm-hmm. know, like your genes are very hard coded mm-hmm. and to fight that and to think you can is pretty trivial, you know? Yeah. You can't really fight it. Right. I mean, it's, it's fighting an impossible battle. But then again, dude, with all the things that have come out, you never know like what might come out later in life. Yeah. The scientific age is just transforming by the second. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. It's, it's a crazy world, man. But I mean, I'm sure you've realized, but now like things are just so complicated, you know, the way interactions work in theory, you're like, Oh, this is going to increase dopamine, which is increase happiness. But the, you know, the withdrawals, this, that, the, the actual like chain reaction of that. Creates. Oh, are you talking about like actual medications, like things that aren't natural? Yeah. Medications, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. lifestyles, whatever. I mean, it really just comes down to, um, in my view, it comes down to incorporating, you know, science in, in the best way possible, but also keeping in mind like our ancestral like heritage, how we actually evolved and making that, you know, cohesive to our progress really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think we're doing a pretty good job and listening to Andrew Huberman helps yeah. a lot, bro. Yeah. That guy is a genius. That dude's the man. Dude, a lot of things have definitely been happening since the last time we went on the podcast. And honestly, we haven't been able to hang out very much recently either. It's been hectic. Yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of sad about it. Yeah. It's life, man. But um, just kind of wanted to catch up on like all the things that have been going on in our lives right now. So I've been going to LA a lot recently like a lot a lot just to see if um if it would really be the move for me you know just i mean then again i feel like i can't you you can't really know until you put yourself in the situation and live there for like even a year maybe even more Mm -hmm. but um obviously it's nice to be able to familiarize myself with it before just jumping in head first um stepping into the space i mean Honestly, you kind of just have to do it regardless. You kind of do, do have to just jump in there yeah. um, whenever you're doing, you're dealing with change and you're going somewhere new. But um, it has actually been really helpful that I've just been traveling up there in the meantime while I still have this living space here in San Diego. Yeah. Uh, it does make a difference in, I think, feeling comfortable with the change. Like, if necessary, like if 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 you're incurring change in your life, then I think no matter what, you really just have to step in and accept that change. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, build some mental toughness over it and fucking do it, execute because that's the only way that you're ever going to get through, right? Yeah. Um, but there does seem to be this this um, factor that by allowing something to absorb, by allowing yourself to absorb something slowly and periodically uh it does make the change a lot less drastic and a lot less shocking and something that's a lot easier to adapt to i think yeah Yeah. so just going over there slightly trying to meet more people seeing how the energy is over there and how it's different than san diego has been like pretty valuable and i think there's a lot of differences between san diego and la yeah yeah i'm sure man i'm sure what have you noticed is like the biggest the biggest difference well for one for sure people in san diego are <laughs> definitely still feel a lot more chill yeah yeah i mean i really love that like the people that i met are all really good people and they all have good hearts mm. but um now that i've known them for longer i can actually backtrack what i've said a lot before and say that they are kind of stressed (laughs) they are kind of always they have this energy of like always being like they don't have enough energy to share to give with others it's harder for them to interact with other people because they are so consumed with all the things that they have to take care of in their life right now Mm. and with themselves Mm. that it like it's hard to text back yeah or it's hard to like respond like within a day or it's hard to do this and that and i understand because especially when you're low in energy or you're not feeling very great if you're doing all the things that you're doing like most people are in la where they're always trying to work and always putting so much on their plate probably more than they can take Mm -hmm. i can see how you know it's like i don't blame you yeah but um yeah, dude, that's the biggest difference, I think, okay. really. Um, but aside from that, though, there's still good people. Good people are anywhere. Mm. Bad people are anywhere. San, I'm sure San Diego has some people without the greatest intentions, too. But Yeah, we've seen it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's definitely more chill down here. 
Yeah. 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 I People mean, it's just different strokes for different folks. Careless. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm sure you can find a mutual ground in both areas, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's not too far, but yeah, I can see that, man. I mean, it's just, I really believe that the places you go is, you know, a filter for certain mindsets, you know? So whether you're going to San Diego, you're going to LA, like there's certain, you know, draw that it comes with that city and a certain person goes there and a certain person thrives there. And if you don't, you head out, you know? So it's, there's definitely filters for each city. Wait, what do you mean by filters? Like um, filters that kind of separate people that don't like it and like it. And it's all in like their mentality, you know, like if LA is like, go, go, go driven, huge aspirations, huge goals. Someone that's like that goes there and they're like, I love that. I'm staying here. If, not, if that's not their vibe, they go there and like, yeah, it's not really my, my vibe. I'm going to check something out, you know, something else out. So different cities just attract different mentalities. You know what I'm saying? I'm a little bit confused. <laughs> <laughs> sorry okay so i mean the same thing would apply to like a college right yeah like let's say you go to like ucsb like hippie town everyone's like lovey dovey uh, yeah like, yeah yeah certain vibe to that you know you go to usc and it's more like the la vibe like everyone's driven they're trying to get shit done push 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 go, okay go, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's definitely like filters for each city you know what i'm saying like the filter is like in the middle oh, oh yeah. okay okay yeah okay yeah it's the word fil- the, the way that you use the word filter is what i was trying to get at okay it yeah. sounds more the way that i I'm capturing it from you kind of reminds me more of like a filter for a picture where like, Oh no, 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 no. I'm thinking filter in terms of like a literal like filter, like a, like a water filter, right? It's only certain like you're filtering out different kinds of people. Yeah. Certain particles can go through the water filter, certain mentality, like a city. Yeah. I gotcha. I gotcha. That's interesting. That's an interesting way to think about it. Shit. Well, it's been cool though. Uh, went on a cabin trip for the first time to big bear. I've never been bro. Um, everyone was like skiing and snowboarding and I, I wanted to do it, but like I skied when I was a kid and I wanted to learn how to snowboard now. But the thing is like the fact that I am trying to, I'm trying to win Olympia and I want to be on that stage so badly right now. I want to compete again this year. Mm -hmm. Um, I I just realized after all the mistakes that I've made in the past, such as, you know, breaking my leg, doing stupid shit. I need to be a lot more responsible about like my future. And as I grow older, I can tell that I am becoming more conscious and more conscious and more uh, like considerate of how is this going to affect me 10 years down the road? Yeah. How is this going to affect me 30 years down the road now? Whereas before I used to only think maybe like a couple years ahead at most, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. But yeah, that definitely comes with time. At least that's what it felt like. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I, I just like realized like if I break my like leg like skiing or snowboarding, then that literally just puts me out of career for what like one second of fun. Yeah, yeah, uh, kind of sucks because like I don't want to like I don't want to feel like a puss bag that I I'm not skiing, but at the same time it's like the the responsibility is real. Yeah, no, it's definitely real. I mean, it really comes down to like the degree that you put trying to compete. Mm-hmm. You know if, what what type of importance you're trying to put on that. So yeah. I mean, if all cards on the table, our car- all cards are on the table. You know, you definitely want to push for that, not take risks. Yeah, I mean, sh- I'm sure the cabin was fun, right? The cabin was fun <laughs> as hell, dude. The cabin yeah. was super fun. Yeah, we're all just like chilling in the cabin and having a good time. And I mean, even the skiing part was fun. I, I decided to ski once. Mm-hmm. I decided to ski for one day, and it was like <laughs> it was kind of a. I I started skiing on the bunny slope and bro, I swear to God, I went pizza. I went full on pizza. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I, I don't, you know, I, I'm going to keep my control. I remembered how I learned this when I was younger and bro, I don't fucking know what happened, but I just went shoom, fucking started zooming 200 miles per hour. Just yeah. poof, down that, down that, uh, bunny slope, bro. Dude, the baby so slope. Scary. And everyone's turning their heads. All my friends, all our friends are turning their heads, looking at me like, Niall, slow <laughs> down. And I'm like, I'm fucking pizzaing. What do you want me to do? And then I literally see in front of me, someone is sitting on the ground. Oh God. Yeah. Cause they like fell and they're just yeah. like trying to get their, their ski back on or whatever. Yeah. And I literally foresaw my ski going straight through that person's neck. And I was like, dude, I don't know what to do right now. So I just, Right I just shrink, just turned, skirted, and fucking flipped me over, and uh, I felt my right leg twist, and I literally thought it was about to break off until uh, 
luckily the ski you know they 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 try to make sure that especially for like the begin, beginner skis they're the Come like the you. amount of force required to yeah, yeah to pop those off isn't too bad mm -hmm. so that shit popped right off um but it was like the weirdest angle that like i actually had trouble walking for the rest of the day um it was better by the next day which is cool but yeah. that shit after that shit happened i'm just like nope <laughs> i'm not <laughs> I'm not skiing anymore. Buddy yeah. slope and all the other slopes are over. Dude, <laughs> I remember the first was not time, worth it. The first time I went snowboarding, my friends decided to mess with me. They put me down a black diamond. I mean, no, Wait, I'm, what's that? You know, like black diamond, like like the hardest red diamond, whatever it is. It's like the hardest, not the hardest slope, but like a hard ass slope, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Steep, bro. So I remember we go up the black diamond. Black is that, diamond. Is that that's called. not in Big Bear or anything. No, it's it's the rating of difficulty for the slopes, you know? Oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm such a noob, dude. Yeah, I think it's a black <laughs> diamond. I don't know. I'm probably wrong. But yeah, so there's this, you know, like the tram that takes you up the mountain and we kept going, kept going. We passed the clouds. Like we're above the cloud layer. We just keep pushing. I'm like, what the fuck? I was shaking, dude. I'm like, what are you guys putting me in? They're like, it's all right, man. We're going to help you through it. Like you're going to be good, bro. It's going to be fine. I'm like, all right, you guys suck. Like this sucks. I get up top. I'm trying to put my snowboard on. I'm trying to put together and I look up and they just left it was just me there i'm like are you kidding me right now so i'm flying down the mountain dude because i didn't even know how to slow down bro i'm just like like zooming down the mountain the only way i would slow down is just to like literally just fall and like tumble six times yeah and then just start over again so i just go like 40 miles per hour take a big turn <laughs> fall get up turn fall it was non-stop bro people in the tram were just laughing at me i was so i was so pissed dude i came down there i'm like are you guys kidding me like i almost died bro it was, it was super scary. Oh my that God, bro. Yeah. If you don't, you're doing it scary. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know if you knew how Dion broke his spine. He broke his spine. Yeah. From because Levi and Ryan took him to Big Bear. Yeah. And those guys are like pros at, uh, yeah. at, at, at not skiing at snowboarding. Yeah. And same shit dude he he was a newbie and yeah. they didn't tell him which slope was which and they took him to the hardest slope in big bear yeah the hardest slope in big bear yeah and so he literally just goes flying like super fast doesn't know how to stop and uh he broke his broke spine his, broke his back so he had to have a uh, spinal surgery jesus. he remembers not being able to move for like a small period of time jesus yeah yeah dude that Intense. it gets dangerous man i had someone my friend broke his femur yeah it was bad yeah 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 it's scary it's fun though if you know what you're doing god dude the femur oh shit that's a big bone dude that's a big ass bone you know bro. you felt that man. You, you felt that thing crack probably like shake your whole body oh you know how much force it takes to break a femur oh my god yeah that's no fun Fuck, dude and <laughs> yeah i and when i broke my leg it was just my tibia too just the uh the balancing bone the ba balancing. I thought your fib fibula is rebalancing. Is your tibia the big one? Uh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're right. I think you're right. Your tib. The tibia is the. Uh, I'm pretty sure that is the big one. Yeah, because my anatomy yeah, 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 teacher. Yeah, yeah. Said, my bad. My anatomy teacher, like, she was good. She was a good teacher, but the way she like put like tibia and fibula is yeah, fibula is like a little fib. Like it's just a small fib, like you know, like small bouncing, fib. bouncing ball. It's just a small fib. <laughs> That's yeah. funny. Yeah. Uh, um, but I think a part of the reason too that like I was having issues with skiing though was a uh, I was so low in energy and like a lot of people don't really, a lot of people who don't do PEDs or don't you know, you know, it's not like something that they're interested in or they're not competitive in bodybuilding don't really totally understand all the repercussions and stuff that PEDs can really have on you. Uh, they have like a good idea, but there's a lot more stuff than people realize, I think, mm -hmm. um, such as like, I'll be totally transparent with what I'm what I was taking, but um, I started doing a, a cycle most recently, um, a cutting cycle, so I could have, you know, view my body and my physique and see how shredded I can get one last time, see my abs one last time before I decide to bulk with the coach that I'm going to bulk with mm -hmm. for, you know, my pro shows, right? And so I started running Mastron and Winstrol on top of like my TRT base. Um, I know I should increase my testosterone because of the potential of estrogen suppression, but, you know, I like to look dry. So 
Mm -hmm. I don't want to like increase it too much, but like the problem with that, like taking both of those is that it's really, it just keeps excreting water out of your system, especially if your estrogen is low. And so every morning I wake up severely dehydrated, like severely dehydrated. And Someone actually asked this in a question. We got a bunch of questions for a Q&A, by the way, from the stories. Yeah. But someone actually asked this, um, like, how has it been with T3 and stuff? Have you used T3 and T4? And I have used T3 before. Not actual um, synthetic T3, but I've used Armour Thyroid okay. T3. Is it a secretion? Um, it's a little bit more of a natural, huh? Is it a secretagogue? Does it secrete? No, no, it's not a secretagogue. Okay. It's, it's, it's like a, it's like a, it's still a supplementation. It still replaces your thyroid, but okay. it's I don't I don't I don't quite know the science behind it, so I can't tell you yeah. without you know don't take me for this. But I do believe that it's like a a, a bit more natural than actually synthetic thyroid. Okay. Um, and, and something in the way that it is, uh, something in the way that it is allows you to more easily come back with your natural thyroid than if you took T three. If you took T three for a very very long time, then I don't know how easy it is for you to, you know, bring your actual T3 back. You know what I mean? You're suppressed. Kind of just like testosterone if you're taking TRT. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But, you know, if you take a medication like armor thyroid, you can't really take calcium or magnesium in the mornings when you do take that. You you should be taking out a fasted state that you shouldn't be eating for 30 minutes to an hour afterwards. And if you take that stuff, then you should also avoid taking magnesium or calcium within four hours of taking that medication. So say that I'm taking armor thyroid with like a cutting um, cycle such as mass and Winnie. Yeah. And my estrogen's low. I am drying out and I can't even replace a lot of my electrolytes in the morning for like four hours. So why so, why is that? Why can't you take calcium and magnesium? It just it just inhibits the absorption of oh. the medication. Oh yeah, magnesium. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it makes it void basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it doesn't make it void, but it reduces the absorption, so it's not going to be as effective. Gotcha. You know, like uh, I could give you an example, like maybe if a T three, you know, my T 3s crashed, but then I took Armour Thyroid and it put me up at like the upper end, uh, like around four. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a high number for your T3. Um, say that I took magnesium and cal- calcium like with my supplement, it could be like 2.5. Okay. could be like 2.5 between 2.5 to 3. Gotcha. So, I mean, it could put you down like half of the range, half of the reference range or anything. But, you know, as long as it's in the reference range, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. It's but, like relative. Right. But that's that's what they... That's what... Uh, it's is medically advised anyways by the way guys yep so this podcast isn't sponsored but um my personal sponsors are young la and huge supplements and then um if you guys are interested in helping with the podcast my whole entire livelihood is actually just made through these (laughs) using code nile with both of these substances so substances being a clothing company and then my supplement company so if you guys are interested in supporting the podcast through monetary ways then that's the best way you can support me and it means a lot finally if you guys are interested in our hrt friendly bodybuilding company you guys can click the link down below that's the company that has taught me a lot of different things but they also hooked us up with uh, testosterone and um, a bunch of other peptides and things that we take for health reasons um but mainly uh like my I, I thank them for like my hair loss protocols as well as uh, what else have I been doing from them? Like I wouldn't have been able to try Armour Thyroid and fix my thyroid for a period of time if it wasn't for them either. Um, what else? Oh, the glutathione. It's freaking amazing. Yeah. yeah. I had like a reel that I was talking about how glutathione, like because I've been taking that, I haven't gotten sick since I started injecting that. Nice. So glutathione is the most powerful antioxidant that can be found in your body. So this will help destroy free radicals and keep you healthy as well as some good mental clarity. But anyways, yeah, going back to like the skiing thing, like I had a lot of trouble like having enough energy like in the mornings from like the dieting and then also like the dehydration, no electrolytes and stuff. So it was just really hard for me to like really even fire any muscles. Yeah. So when I was like skiing, honestly, the whole time, I also felt like I was like doing this and shit. And I'm like... You know, I got to be strong enough. I work out, I work hard, but at the same time, like the things just were not signaling. Yeah. It just was not signaling. So. Yeah. It's weird dynamic, you know, 
because in a sense you're at peak performance in your realm, you know, but at the same time, peak performance, quote unquote, like if you look at professional athletes, you know, a lot of them aren't necessarily dick skin shredded. You know, they have a decent amount of body fat, at least enough to have like a good amount of energy mm -hmm. in their bodies. You know, like MMA fighters, for instance, a lot of them are just like shredded, but their cardio is insane. You know, their, their workout endurance, their muscle output is insane. So it's just different strokes, man. Hmm. Yeah. But yeah, so I haven't been uh, taking these substances too much in the past, but then I started, um, you know, I've done like one cycle with Winnie that one time I took the little picture with my striated glutes posted on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So this is my second cycle with Winnie in, all, in, in several years, to be honest, because I think the last time I took it was for uh, my competitions. Yeah. Um, and I turned pro and stopped competing in 2019. So considering that I just turned 2023, it's been it's been a couple of years wild. But I think that's why I responded so strongly the first time, because mm -hmm. now that I'm taking it the second time, I'm definitely not responding nearly as strongly. It's crazy how much of a difference. Mm -hmm. The first time I just took barely a little bit and like you could see that my glutes look fucking ripped as shit. Right. Um, but now I'm I up the dose and I'm taking 37.5 uh, and the aesthetics are not nearly as prominent. Like the dryness isn't as much there. Um, I feel like there's some lacking in what what it feels like is that there's some lacking in aesthetic appearance and cosmetic appearance change but the side effects the things that i'm not interested in having such as the dryness or um the mental like the mental issues that come with like such of a high dht level yeah. as well as a lower estrogen are still there at about the same place so it's almost like i feel like there's less benefit for the drawbacks I mean, that could just be me, but that's personally my feeling. Interesting. Yeah. So So you feel like your androgen receptors are kind of getting desensitized? Well, the thing is, I think this is true for any substance, honestly. If you think about any drugs, really, um, that's why they say you really need to cycle it, like cycle, cycle caffeine, cycle, cycle, because the benefits after a period of time wither away, but then the drawbacks remain constant mm. you don't ever have drawbacks or side effects for a drug that dip out dip off and dip away like the benefits do yeah. right yeah so say that your drawbacks are the exact same caffeine still keeps you from going to sleep you still have the same amount of anxiety if you're taking too much yeah but, but the then euphoria, the euphoria is gone yeah right and i say that i normally like to see the euphoria equivalent to the cosmetic effect of the PED that you're on. Interesting. I don't know if there's any kind of like euphoric feeling or whatever. Or like, oh, I'm a fucking sick cunt badass well, you're, when you're, you're taking PEDs. You're translating to the physical side, right? Yeah. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying is 100%. that the benefits seem to go down. So really like it's like if you're taking any of those things you want to. I would advise that like if you took something before and you really want to kill it at a show and maximize yourself, then I would honestly take as much time as possible off of that substance that you used because mm -hmm. you'd probably respond a lot better. Yeah. Have a, a lot better of an outcome for, you know, for like the drawbacks, like, like fucking not being able to sleep at night, you know, having heart palpitations or yeah. like all that stuff is not, it's terrible. It's so terrible, bro. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's bad, man, for sure. And then, you know, especially for compounds that are more cosmetic based, I mean, there's really no point. Like, if you're going to take windshell to build muscle, that's a pretty silly thing to do. You know, there's better compounds for that than just yeah. windshell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, it definitely peak. Do it when it's peak time for those type of compounds for sure. Especially if the co the cosmetic side gets desensitized. I mean, there's, there's really no point. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about your com um, your competition? Catch me up on that shit, dude. It was a hassle, man. Um. Yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot. You um, look crazy, though. I look You're sick. You killing it. I look sick. Um, the mental side was probably not too hot, to be honest. Um, you know, granted, there were a lot of, like, life things that were going on, you know, stuff in my life that probably exasperated it. But, I mean, you know, for reference, I was taking Trin, Masteron, Testosterone, um, Winstraw towards the end, Provirin, um, and Albuterol. So... Just get them out of stuff in my system. Damn. Yeah. Albuterol too. 
Yeah. It's a little inhaler puff, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I didn't have a beta blocker too. So like the cardiac effects, to, you know, that was kind of stressed me out. But I think the biggest thing was, you know, I'm never someone that has issues sleeping. And that was the first cycle that I've ever taken where I noticed a huge impact in my sleep. You know, I really couldn't. Towards the last like six weeks, I couldn't sleep. I mean, I would go to bed. That's what I'm feeling right now. And yeah. it's crazy, dude. Like, yeah. like it doesn't happen often, but like, like one, I had that one night on Christmas night where, ah, dude, I'm glad that I um, was pretty sure that like I knew what the, what, what it was, what the cause was. Cause I've been so familiar with my body after doing these studies for the last couple of years and like writing down in my notes, literally everything yeah. when it comes down to like, like I, I can literally show you guys that I have notes of all the things and the cycles and everything that I've taken in like the last four years. Where is it? Yeah, right here. I don't know if this will, but like I can literally just keep scrolling down, bro. <laughs> it just doesn't stop. It's your dissertation. Yeah. Um, And so from that, that night, I woke up in the middle of the night. I was having the craziest anxiety yeah. here. I wrote down notes. In fact, I kind of just want to read it out for you. Um, <clears throat> I was having the craziest anxiety, uh, but the, the weirdest part was that I, where is it? Like I had this need to like grip things tightly. Like I started doing push ups because I felt like I had this anger and yeah. aggression that was just unending yeah like this unending aggression that was that was going on it's very um, literally like felt like the worst night of my life i felt suicidal like i wanted it to end like it was so painful yeah uh that i i literally had thoughts of like fuck dude like i just want to end this Jesus. right now i just want to end it right when now. when was that it was really bad it was christmas night that was christmas the night of the 25th oh. yeah um had no sleep felt irritable pushy um felt this urge to do a thousand push-ups uh, I was having like hot flashes and cold flashes. Like, yeah. uh, I don't, I don't even know what that's called. If that's, if, is there, is there a specific phrase for when you're having both, uh, menopause? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't that's know. probably what it was. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was just, I don't know, man. I just, I needed some chocolate. That's a trick. <laughs> <laughs> Took a, yeah, dude. But then I like, after that feeling, I was just like, I'm very, very sure that this is estrogen. I'm very sure this is estrogen related. I think my estrogen crashed. So I yeah. went to the, I, I literally went to the bathroom and injected 0.18 of a milliliter of test in me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not really, uh, I don't want to do the calculation right now. Um, injected the 0.18 of test, went back to sleep. And immediately I felt so much better, dude. Mm -hmm. I felt so much better. Um, I actually even got horny too yeah. <laughs> from it. Crazy. Cause like obviously very likely my estrogen was suppressed. So the fact that it was back within range, I finally had a libido again. Um, but it was just like shocking that it just happened that night. Like all the other nights were okay. And then suddenly that night it was just like, ugh, dude, yeah. so bad. So yeah. you probably just pushed the bill on estrogen, man. I mean, you know, I'm sure there's a base level of estrogen that you need as a requirement for your body. Mm -hmm. Same thing as for anything else. And you probably just hit that, that bottom plateau. Yeah. It was just, it wasn't enough. I think so. Yeah. Cause you know, estrogen is important for a lot of things, dude. Right. Your, your neurology, most importantly, you know, for people that cross their estrogen, literally, you know, estrogen has, has plays in, in your brain. So if it's crashed, it actually affects that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's crazy that, that your body, body is really like a pendulum though. It's like you could uh, plan out a cycle and stuff, but if somebody isn't analyzing not just your blood work, but your symptoms regularly, like then you really don't know what's going on with your body. And a lot of these guys, a lot of coaches who don't even ask for your blood work. Yeah. They're just giving you some cookie cutter shit that it's, it's negligent could, you know, kill you. Yeah. It's hard, man. I mean, there's, it's, it's so subjective from person to person by how they respond to each thing, you know, and everyone's homeostasis is different. Everyone has different thresholds mm -hmm. for everything. Um, you know, and in a sense, when you're hopping on cycle, you're, in, you're injecting these things, you're kind of playing God, you know, you're, you're messing around with, with your own biological hormones. And that's a very touchy issue, you know, because yeah. one thing can affect a thousand other things. Absolutely. So, you know, just, just negligence as a coach, negligence as, as your own, you know, test subject, I guess, um, can be really detrimental to just 
your health. It's, mm-hmm. it's terrible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, Nathan and I just basically are casual conversation on PEDs all the time. We we're always like talking about how it's just not it, which is hilarious because we are bodybuilders. Yeah. But uh, Nathan was just telling me too about how he's not even interested in competing anymore after this last show, even though the guy fucking killed it and won first place. I can yeah. kind of relate in a way. Yeah, man. It's, it's tell, just, us, tell us though. It's a hard play because, you know, for me, like what I want to project is, you know, healthiness, lifestyle, you know, just being like the best version of yourself. And I'd be lying to say like during that cycle, like I said, I couldn't sleep at all. You know, I was irritable. I felt like my fight or flight was fight or flight was on constantly. Um, and the habits I built through that, you know, the, the habits that I built with dealing with the stress, the habits I built with sleep, the habits I built with eating, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a healthy thing. So, I mean, that, that kind of got to me. Um, and you know, come the show, the whole show ended and, you know, I felt, I felt rewarded cause it was done, but I didn't necessarily feel as good as I feel like I should have, you know? And I think because of the way I was in my prep, it was kind of the dictating factor of, um, you know, just reconsidering if this is really what I want to really get into. Um, because, you know, ultimately you're kind of proving it to yourself and in terms of competing, I don't necessarily think that's something that I want to prove, um, to get to that level as a competitor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about like your conflict that you're feeling with your job right now versus like your purpose? Yeah, man, it's a hard play, you know? So this kind of ties into it too. Um, with social media, I mean, you're kind of adhering to the masses, right? So you're trying to play a game that, that fits a lot of breath. So you're hitting a, a wide shot of, of audience. You want to get as many people to see your stuff as possible. Um, and the reality is, you know, what makes people attracted to your posts might not necessarily be the most congruent thing to their happiness, the most congruent thing to what's best to them, you know, because some people like to see things that might be somewhat detrimental to their long term success, I guess, um, long term health. And it's kind of just the issue of like, you know, as a creator um, to make content that's saleable in a good way that people want to digest is going to be a lot harder than making content that is um, Shit, son. Fuck. Down goes Nile. Ow. <laughs> oh, that, hurts. that was the slowest fall I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I literally went down in slow mo. That was subtle. Good job. <laughs> Sorry, bro. <laughs> you good. About a creator? Oh, so, um, yeah, I mean, just as a creator, it's a lot harder to push stuff that's salient in a good way that people can digest mm-hmm. as opposed to, you know, quote unquote, pushing just BS, you know, just looking sick, being a sick cunt, looking as crazy as possible. That's a lot easier for people to digest and, you know, really get with. Um, so it's just a hard play, bro. And I think for me with competing um, from the pros that I think I can gain from that isn't necessarily what I think my, my path is, man, it's really just trying to figure out something that um, is just for the greater good of myself that helps build, a, you know, healthy, good habits for myself. And then also something that, you know, people that follow me can digest in the best way possible. If mm-hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. It does make a lot of sense. Um, I do think that you're doing a lot though. I think you're, I think you're doing a lot more for people than you think, even though it does feel like a selfish thing to maybe compete for yourself just to see how well you can do. Mm-hmm. Like you were, definitely inspiring people and you were every time every time i see someone come up to you 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 are there giving them your full attention and giving them your whole heart yeah and your entire mind mm-hmm. and you're telling them exactly what you believe in every way and fashion as genuinely as possible yeah and how you can help them and what you personally believe will help them grow or whatever they're coming up to you for yeah like you're always, you're always, uh, you're always there for other people, man. I try to be, man. Yeah. I so mean, that's, I think you're, that's, that's the biggest thing is, you know, the whole inspiration side. Cause if you do make it far and as a competitor, um, you have a sense of respect to that. You know, there's also people that are inspired by you. They look up to you in a sense. Um, and honestly, the reason I got into you know social media to begin with was because when we got close, I saw people that would talk to you and you know, they would listen to you. They look up to you and whatever you say, it holds a lot of value to them. Um, as opposed to just being some Joe Schmo on the street, you know, like what you say is going to turn the tides in their life a lot more than someone else. So I saw that and I'm like, that's a crazy opportunity. You know, like if someone could see me in a place where they respect me and I could say something that's, you know, like 
quote unquote, like life changing to them, something that could really impact them in a good way. That's a great thing, you know? So that's really what it comes down to is just being in a place where it's, you know, I'm, uh, I'm inspiring and the people that, you know, know me, the people that talk to me, I can actually be a good influence in their life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm proud of you, bro. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. <laughs> but uh, all that said, um, the thing is, even though we do keep talking about how uh, negative PEDs are and they have a lot of negatives to them, a lot, man, uh, which is why it's so smart to, it's so important to be conscious about about anything that you're taking. Mm-hmm. Um, I do truly believe the, the, when you can, the natural way for anything is always the better way. Yeah. Uh, but at the at the end of the day it is a sport and no sport like the the whole purpose of sports is putting us through something that's ex- extremely difficult yeah and it's calculated in a competitive purpose. way to see how we can exactly mm-hmm. yeah. and to see how we can perform the best yep out of everybody else we're competing against yep um and that's the fact of the matter in this sport the part of part of the game is learning the science of how these things affect you and overcoming not just the physical stress of Mm -hmm. training and eating, um, but also the mental stresses of like being on the PEDs Mm -hmm. and the physical stresses of being on the PEDs and making sure that you're taking the ancillaries that you're supposed to and doing the cardio and managing your lipids as you're supposed to so you don't end up with some kind of organ failure in the end. Yeah. it's it's like saying like oh like when when people are saying something like uh like oh like fucking like PDs aren't PDs ain't it I'm never gonna be a competitive bodybuilder because because uh you know f- like fuck dudes that are on gear like they just take it for um they just take it because they have like mental health issues and shit like that's like the same thing as saying like oh like fuck fuck fighting I'm never gonna do fighting fighting stupid because you're literally just killing yourself like everyone in there is just beating themselves to death and like Mm -hmm. you're coming out with a bunch of issues. Well, fighting is a sport, you know, it's a sport to put yourself through something that's hard, something that's tough, something to build resilience to. It's, that's part of the fucking game, man. Uh, If you can't, if, if, if you can't do it, then you can't do it. And that's not you. You can't dig the sport. Yeah. Um, I mean, part of it. Yeah. The way I see sport is just the reason why people admire sports, the reason why they watch sports at the pinnacle of the game, you know, the NFL college, Um, You want to see the best of the best. And the reason being is because you admire the excellence of that. You know, there's excellence. There's excellence in what they do. And that translates in their day-to-day habits. Mm -hmm. People look up to that, you know. So it takes a certain person. But with each sport, there's calculated risk, like you said, right? So, you know, like for football, calculated risk is head injuries. It's CTE. You know, there's excellence in the sport. You're driving to be the best you can. Right. Everyone knows. Yeah, like you said, like the NFL had 100%. Right. Yeah, yeah. Or basically. Yeah, they did a study and it's absurd CTE. absurd percentage of, of NFL retired athletes that have CTE. So everyone knows that that comes with the sport, you know. But if you look at the evolution of the sport now, I mean there's calculated risk and but there's also people knowing how to prevent that, you know. Like people aren't getting hit anymore. Um, they're falling down, they're not leading with their heads. You look at quarterbacks, they just, you know, straight fall. There's receivers now. Now it's all part of the technique. It's part of the technique, you know. So that's the longevity of it. If you look at the best players, the longest lasting players, they're the ones that that take the time to actually, you know, do what's best for them instead of getting that extra yard. Like some receivers like Tyler Lockett, he just falls down. Like he's about to get hit. He doesn't even try to hit anyone. He just literally like falls down and he's probably gonna have a really long career because of that, you know? Mm -hmm. So same thing with PDs and, you know, being a bodybuilder, it's just realizing the risks and how do you mitigate as many risks as possible and evolve in that sport. Good shit, dude. Well said. Thank you. But yeah, dude, uh, I mean, cutting though hasn't been too hard this time. I've actually been easy. It's actually been easier for me to like fast and stuff. And um, to be honest, I like to keep things as natural as possible. And I'll, you know, I'll take maybe just a little bit of caffeine during the day if I need to for a little bit of appetite suppression. And that helps a lot as well. Mm-hmm. But um, just staying focused on work and really, really using focus as my driving factor is what really helps keep my mind off the uh, the appetite. Yeah. But if it just like gets too overwhelming while I'm on a cut, like if I add a little bit of kratom, even just a microdose, which I've like been tapering it down to microdoses now. Um, and I feel like that's a lot better for my longevity, honestly, especially since something like kratom will slow your digestion. Uh, literally just like two grams and I will feel like a slight appetite suppression. Yeah. Which is pretty amazing. Yeah. Because even like such a small amount and it's already helpful. Yeah. Especially if you add the whole like 
focus and you know staying on task mm -hmm. keeping yourself busy how how are you uh like do you have your own kind of like ways for how you've been staying on diet because i know you're on the other side of the spectrum in terms of like uh you're more of a hard gainer than i am right yeah but at the same time like i'm sure that it wasn't easy <laughs> competing and uh getting shredded for the prep yeah so i mean in terms of the diet um i don't know i, I used to have a really big appetite when i was younger but recently my appetite's been pretty damn low so i don't really get hungry too much you know albeit um you know through prep i was i was using nicotine which is also an appetite suppressant mm -hmm. um so that probably helped a little bit but for my appetite you know it wasn't anything crazy the whole time you know i was hungry but it didn't really affect my my mood too much it didn't affect my um, attentiveness i think sleep was the biggest thing that kind of took a cut in that but yeah, I mean, for me, the biggest issue is honestly getting enough food in. Um, and I think what it comes down to is how I associated food with as I was growing up, you know? So for me, food was never anything that was necessarily a comfort thing. And when I was stressed, I didn't really think like, oh, I need to eat. Um, there was no emotions that was tied to eating. It was more so just just eating. So there's no triggers necessarily that, that forced me to get that food in. Um, so beyond just being satiated, which happens fairly quickly, it's really hard for me to push to eat more food. <laughs> so it's, it's a real issue. Um, you know, it's, it, it just becomes a chore. So for me, a cut is way easier than a bulk actually. Um, you know, not even psychologically, but just like physically, it's just an easier thing for me to do. Hmm. Yeah. So how was your cut for the competition? It was, it was good. I mean, so I was taking out butyrol. Um, which is like clenbuterol, but the dose is a little higher, same premise. So, you know, that raises your metabolism by, I mean, theoretically like five to 10%, which is, you know, a decent cut up. Um, and my calories are, were pretty damn low. I think towards the end I was sitting at like, it was probably like 1600 calories. Um, it was pretty damn low. So the whole cut itself. Yeah. Was, that's, that's pretty low. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's 1700 right now, 1750 and I'm dying. Dude. Yeah, it, was, it sucks. It sucks. 1,500 um, actually. Yeah, yeah. So the energy, obviously, you're, I'm gonna, I had no energy. Um, it was hard for me to do my cardio. You know, I'm not even going to lie. There was a few days of training. I just got a pump and just dipped because I'm like, I can't do this. I don't have the energy for this. I'm going to yeah. pass out. Um, so, I mean, that's just purely physiological. Um, you can't really get beyond that. But for the cravings themselves, it wasn't too hard. You know, having the actual need to like, oh, I got to have a cheat meal. I got to eat this. I didn't really do that. Um, but yeah, it was more so just the energy cut and just the focus that came with the lack of sleep, um, you know, given the stuff that I was on. Nice. Yeah. Huh. So were there any like techniques or any like hacks that you had for like staying on diet? Uh, I mean, obviously don't have junk food in your house, you know, like dude, all that I, makes such a huge difference. Dude, yeah. You know, the thing is with self-control is like people like to say, oh, I have self-control. I can do this. But humans, I mean we really have very little self-control in bro. We, we look for the resources. Our natural yeah. brain looks for the resources around us. Yeah. If you have the resources within your vicinity and it's that it. easy. Yeah, bro. Of course. Cause you want to survive. Yeah. Like, uh, the, the, the reason why you might not have the resources prior was because you had to go out there and get it. And sometimes mm -hmm. maybe the situation that you were in a lot, like, you know, kept you from getting that resource. Yeah. But, yeah, if you're fucking starving and you're hungry and you're, you're gonna, dieting and you see a bag of chips yeah. on your table. Yeah. I mean, dude, like, like I, on. that's so hard. Yeah. Cause it's me and Matt. So we have like yeah. the blandest food in the house. It's like oatmeal, um, eggs, raw chicken, like pick your poison, you know? Yeah. I remember like my cheat was we just had cream cheese, which is out of the diet. Nice. And I was like really starving. I would just get like a teaspoon of cream cheese and like that, you know, oh, I, was, shit. I was like, cream a cheat. cheese. Yeah, I was like a cheat. You're not lactose intolerant, are you? No. Bro, I'd shit my brains out. Cream cheese? <laughs> yeah, you're not evolved. I now. sniff that shit and I shit my brains out. Really? Damn, son. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have European descent in you. That's why <laughs> Europeans, they got the, they, they're used to drinking that milk. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's really just, you know, if you have something in your house that you shouldn't be eating, get that out of your house as soon as possible because you're going to eat it, you know, and that goes for anything beyond just prep. Like if you just want to eat healthier, like. Just don't have junk food in your house. You know, yeah. it's a lot harder to drive to the grocery store, pick it up and come back. And that might be the dividing factor for you right. doing it and not doing it. You know, okay. as opposed to just opening a drawer and you got 
whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with that. I, I say the same thing as well. One of my big hacks for like staying on diet, making sure that I'm not eating too much is not having that shit in my house. But the problem with me saying that right now is if you check my cupboard right now, you would see like 10 bags of different types of chips in there. Yeah. <laughs> is, but that's your but cheat meal. Dude. They're all they're all made in avocado oil and yeah. um, grain free and uh, also yeah. organic. So yeah. like, your, your cheat is free. a lot of people's healthy food, free health, though, you know, <laughs> Like, yeah, I mean, you got no Ben and Jerry's in here, Doritos, you know, it's, it's more stuff that's like your quote unquote cheat meal, but it's it's not really. Yeah. One thing I can say is that I haven't had sugar and uh, dude, I couldn't even tell you, man. Like, like the last time I had sugar was maybe someone else's lollipop at a rave. That's admirable. (laughs) And and the last time I was even at like raves, to be honest, like I haven't gone to any raves whatsoever really recently. It's, it's It's a lot less often. It's a trip too because what people don't realize is once you start eating healthier, you get a good diet and it's consistently good diet. Mm -hmm. You know, your gut microbiome literally adapts to that diet. And if you were to switch back into a a really bad diet, you know, let's say you eat out and just eat like buffalo wings, you know, you go to Buffalo Wild Wings. This happened to me on my birthday. I ate like 12 buffalo wild wings and I threw up the next morning. Like I felt felt terrible. Oh yeah, you told me that, dude. Yeah. Yeah, because my body wasn't used to it. Maybe the guy's shit in your wings. Dude, I don't know what it was. Got some... It was Back, factorial is m- m- added some caucus. You added some good shit to your gut biome. Yeah, some streptococcus, <laughs> some staff. Um, yeah, dude. I mean, it must have been like the oils that they cooked it in, or just whatever. But you know, your gut microbiome gets adapted to eating a healthy diet, and beyond just you not being able to really eat a bad diet after that because you feel bad. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, literally, you your brain gets rewired to crave the foods that are good for you. Like yeah. for you, you never have sugar sugar cravings. You right. know, I'm sure you don't. Exactly, which is a big diet sugar. hack for yeah. me. Uh, like it's fucking, it's hard for people, and I understand that. But you got to do the shit, and you got to put your you you got to execute, and it will make all the difference. You will literally see yourself transform before your eyes. Yeah. Anything that you felt like you could never do, you absolutely can do. You have the power to do. Mm. I thought I would like be an alcoholic. I thought I would be eating sugar all the time for the rest of my life. Uh, when I was a kid, I thought I was going to be obese for the rest of my life too. But I obviously don't have any of that anymore at all. Like I stopped drinking alcohol six years ago and ever since I haven't looked back and it's super fucking easy. And that's yeah. why I can go to like events like festivals and it's more of a cardio sesh for me because yeah. um, I I will be honest, like, of course I've taken things, but I minimize the amount of anything that I take. And I also prohibit alcohol at all costs. And I basically just like do a bunch of steps throughout the entire day, Mm -hmm. you know, like 20,000, 30,000 steps in a weekend if I did go to an event. Yeah. Um, Which is why I like to try to do that, you know, but get your cardio in. To be honest, it's I'm like, I don't really care so much about going to raves anymore, at least not. Dude, at this point true. in my life. That's how everyone but, is now, man. It, I mean, we're growing it's, up. It's in the best way, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. and then the other thing is, uh, like, not having sugar, bro, now that that's out of my system, like, I'm never interested in it. Then again, I, I do have, like, an affinity for things like diet soda. I do like sucralose. I do like stevia. Um, I do drink a lot of that stuff. I will admit. I have Quest bars a lot and pretty often. Yeah. Has a lot of artificial sweeteners in it. Yeah. Um, That's a different craving though, you know, because people that crave sugar and they drink something like that, it's not, right. it quell the same. Well, thing. that's the thing is that like a lot of people are very scared about what artificial sweeteners can do to you. Well, the thing is, um, uh, I could actually share a podcast with you guys uh, that goes over a lot of research in bet- between Andrew Huberman and Lane Norton. But um, the fact of the matter is shown that based off of the research that, um, these artificial sweeteners actually don't make very much of a difference um, in your gut biome and a lot of these research studies. Uh, there, there's quite a bit of them that uh, you can't really hold as concrete. Um, and in the way that these artificial sweeteners do help you is if you are a habitual like sugar sugar consumer, you love sweets, you have a sweet tooth and you just can't get rid of that sugar. If you stop consuming sugar because you started drinking like something like artificial sweeteners and there are some research showing that people who have switched from sugars to artificial sweeteners lost tons and tons of adipose tissue, tons of fat a lot of it um, to the point where it improved their gut microbiome because their body composition has changed to a healthier body composition that has in the end actually helped their microbiome. Obviously you can't say that, you know, the artificial sweetener is 
what's improving your gut microbiome because it's probably not, but it's the fact that you are now a healthier being that has made you overall healthier. Mm -hmm. So if this helps you, then absolutely, because it has also been shown that um, people that have stopped sugar and switched to artificial sweeteners have been able to maintain that and make that switch much, much easier than people who just switch straight to something like water. Yeah. Uh, and this is something I was talking about earlier where, yeah, you do have to just step in, but if you can make some slow adjustments over time to slowly adapt to the change that you're incurring, then that change will become a lot more concrete for you. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why I love artificial, artificial sweeteners is because I have a huge sweet tooth and it has fucking helped me lose how much weight since I was a kid. Like, you know, I'm no longer obese and now I'm in fitness and now I'm a bodybuilder. So that's if, if there is some bad thing about it that I don't know of, that none of us know of, that might happen later in life, then it'd be what it'd be. Though. So, yeah, but as of now and of all the research that I've seen, if it helps, if it helps you be healthier, then it's, it's better than consuming sugar. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good thing, man. That's a good thing. Yeah. It's, it's hard, bro. I mean, even, we, even Huberman will have like, like a, like, like maybe a can of like diet soda or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's good, bro. You know? Yeah. As long as you're not overdoing things. Yeah. I, it's a complicated issue to lose weight and build good habits, you know, and you see it as an issue that's across the country and there's a reason it's an issue because that's hard. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, th I think a lot of times like there's, there's cultural aspects, there's mental aspects, there's obviously physical aspects um, and you know, that all works together. Um, but I mean, we just all be lying to ourselves if, if someone were to say like, you know, being overweight's necessarily a healthy thing. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that might be controversial to some people, but that doesn't necessarily, you know, jive with me too much because, um, you're kind of, um, you're pushing towards a, um, unhealthy lifestyle ultimately, mm -hmm. you know, it's just not a good thing to push for. Um, you know, it's, it's more, it's more free for you to think that you can change the things in your life for the better. And you have the power to do that than just accept your state and be like, this is healthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, moving on from that though, uh, the, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, like I guess the, uh, the last hack I have to say though for myself when it comes to, um, diet, when it comes to dieting, especially if I'm on a cut is, uh, like, like I said earlier, the use of Kratom, the one thing that I think people should really be careful though, if they ever use that, the fact is Kratom does react with your opioid receptors. And so thus it is going to be psychologically addictive. Mm. Um, and if you're someone who gets addicted to things easily, um, and it's hard for you to come off, then it's probably better that you just don't even touch the you know the the substance at all yeah. but i found that substances such as kratom and caffeine have been very effective for me personally and i have been able to cycle them so that's why it's effective because you know i'll take periods of time off of caffeine but then when i come back and i use caffeine when i know that i'm going to need it or not need it but when i know that it'll be helpful for me a helpful tool for me such as like i'm trying to perform in a competition or like a you know, a PR and a workout or, um, you know, I'm hosting some like a, a host of multiple podcasts within a day and I want to make sure I'm on my A game, mm -hmm. then it's an incredible tool. So uh, using those, though, you also want to make sure that you don't take too much because something like Kratom will slow your digestive system as well. Um, it can cause constipation. If you take some magnesium citrate, though, uh, even just a tiny little bit, like you break it into a, like a break, break a pill into like a quarter and you take that with your kratom, not only will it help potentiate your kratom, but it'll also help you shit. Yeah. So I haven't found any issues whatsoever with constipation. In fact, I actually think I take too much magnesium because I, <laughs> I end up pooping a lot. Yeah. But um, at least it's always clear. That's good. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I'd, I'd be uh, remiss if I said that it didn't help me with my appetite. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, it's it's a fine line, though, because Kratom is addictive. Um, yeah, it is. Know, we've talked about this, right. and I, I think I was taking it for like two, three weeks straight. Yeah. Um, and I had a little bit of withdrawals for a couple of days. Yeah. It wasn't anything crazy, right. but, you know, there was definitely something there. Mm -hmm. So um, I would know. say it's at least as addictive as caffeine, if not more. Yeah. Yeah, and you know the withdrawals are, are legit. You know that's not to be um, pushed pushed aside. But 
I think the biggest thing is just making sure that, you know, what you use doesn't necessarily own you. Um, to have that Kratom as your crutch, you know, let's say you go somewhere, you forget it, um, you become addicted to it. To have that stress where it ruins, you know, potentially your trip, your day, your week, whatever, because you didn't bring that with you, mm-hmm. you know, that's something that owns you. Right. So it's really important to make sure that you have that that fine line to where you might be using it for your benefit, but you're also not stretching to the point where um, it's exactly that, that owns you. Yeah. Which is why I found it very effective for me to not only cycle things, but take them in micro doses. Mm. So instead of taking a regular dose of each thing, like I keep my, uh, I mean, technically it's not considered a micro dose because it's not that small, but like, you know, I've been minimizing my caffeine intake to 50 milligrams a day. I'll just have like a cup of yerba, yerba mate and normally I don't finish the whole thing. I'll have most of it. So yeah. it'd probably be like 60 milligrams of caffeine. Mm. Um, and I, I found that to be super effective because in my downtime when I'm not on it, I really don't feel that much different. It's, odd. it's a very, very small change, mm-hmm. but it's enough, mm-hmm. enough to be beneficial, especially if I'm just, if one of the main reasons is for appetite suppressant and to make sure that I'm staying on my diet properly, yeah. you know, because if that's going to help you be healthier with your diet and your nutrition and what you're consuming, as well as not over consuming calories to put you at a body composition that's actually less healthy for you. Uh, then it's beneficial for you as long as you're making sure that you're you're using these substances in order to climb and not to fall. Mm. Um, tell me a little bit about your... Uh, I think there was one thing that I wanted to ask you about, though, recently. Because you, you had your competition. Um, um, what else has been going on in your life? Um, I got a new girlfriend. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> Yeah, I got it. It's crazy to me. Um, yeah, it's been good, bro. Boys in a relationship now. Yeah, it's been a good relationship, man. We're doing like the exact same thing. You know, literally, we live the same life, same content thing, same coaching. Um, so it's really cohesive, dude. It's been good. It's a good ride, man. That's dope. Yeah. You guys seem like you work really well together, which is cool. You're both really, uh, you know, passionate about the fitness space as well. So that's dope to see, bro. Yeah. That is really dope to see. No, it's, it's been cool. It's been good. Mm hmm. I didn't expect that to happen, dog. Shit came out of nowhere. I crave intimacy, <laughs> man. That's how it is, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. Oh, fuck, man. I feel like that was me for the longest time when I was a kid. Mm. I don't know what happened. I'm like very different now. Yeah. Yeah. For the first time in my life, I'm like not like I feel like I've like had the intimacy that I felt like I've I've been craving and now I just feel like I'm good by myself, which is kind of crazy because yeah. at the same time, you know, I I, mean, I don't want to, uh, I don't know if they're going to watch this, but like I am like seeing multiple chicks right now, but I mean, I'm not actively seeing them if that makes sense. It's like, it's like I like met these people and somehow we just got along and ended up hanging out a lot and beca- became maybe a little bit more intimate than usual, nice. but um. Yeah, no, I didn't like go dating around. I didn't like look to meet these people. Like just kind of met them in person randomly out of somewhere. And then we just ended up hanging out more. Mm. Uh, But I actually have been doing this thing recently that I've never done before where now I, um, I won't see anyone for like three weeks at a time just because like I, I'm so busy right now that the last thing I ever want to do is build the expectations with this person that I care about potentially um, that I would be able to meet their expectations with, for example, like say they expected to see me every day Mm. or see me every night. But that's not something that I could do because I personally need a lot of time by myself and alone in order to do my work and focus Mm. properly. Um, And that way I can really truly appreciate the time that we have together when we are together and make that actual quality time. Uh, Because all the times that I haven't done that, all the times where I would just, you know, I would just uh, basically stay parallel with the other person. And um, as she was jumping in, I was jumping in with her. It always exploded. Yeah. It always just, we always just jumped in so quickly. It just fucking exploded, you know? Mm -hmm. Like a lot of these expectations just came out out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you should be doing this. You should be doing that. When in the end, it's like, I'm fine if there's like expectations are normal to have in relationships. I personally believe that it's best not to have expectations because I like to be surprised and positive about every outcome that comes up. Mm -hmm. But, you know, 
those if you have expectations those should be expectations that you guys have built together yeah right like those are discussed. the yeah those are those are the the lines that you've discussed around your relationship mm. if nothing has been discussed but people are still expecting something from, of you yeah. then it's like why yeah like why like mind reader this was not yeah like like you you do you want you want me to be your everything like i shouldn't there in the end i don't believe that any partner should be your everything mm -hmm. you should be able to say for example fuel yourself you should be able to say for example um feed yourself and make sure you're healthy that shouldn't be someone else's job or you should be able to you know um exchange conversations with your friends instead of having to have all those same conversations with one person, that partner, and expecting that person to be able to take the weight of all those conversations or all the way that you, you know, all the things that like you're stressed out about or, you know, et cetera. Like one person can only do so much. Yeah. So I just find that what I've been doing recently has been a lot more helpful for me. Yeah. Taking things extra, 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 extra slow. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's definitely the way to go. Man. Right. Yeah, that's good, dude. Yeah, I mean, it really just comes down to um, you know, just being your own person. Like, you can't put yourself completely into the other person. It's just not mm -hmm. a healthy dynamic. It never will be. Right. Yeah, it just doesn't work like that. Um, it's it's too manic. It's too. I mean, you could be invested, but you don't have to have your whole life in that relationship. You know, there's balances. There's relationship. There's work. There's you know everything. There's like a there's multiple things, but you have to have your foot in each part. It can't just be completely one side. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Meeting in the middle is pretty important. Also, your shoulders are looking fucking huge in that oversized tee, dude. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, let's move on to the Q&A part. Okay. Purpose of a romantic relationship. <laughs> Interesting. What is the purpose of a romantic relationship? I mean, to be honest, my personal opinion is uh, there's a lot of people that probably crave intimacy and um, crave that compassion, that love with somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the biggest purpose that can come out of a relationship is the partnership. Yeah. If you can find someone who's a partner with you, who can live life with you and help, each other you. through life yeah. yeah yeah in a complimenting fashion mm. then that's going to be the most kind of powerful relationship yeah but the issue is in this day and age especially from a lot of cinema movies and things like bollywood movies that fantasize love and all this shit mm. you know people such as i from watching anime when i was a kid like how i used to be where i like simps you know yeah, and a lot of people can I can understand that a lot of people feel the need to like, they want to be in a relationship because they're craving that love and that's okay. You know, that's fine. Yeah. But uh, in the end, just make sure that you're doing you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I think it's different for me. Like I don't necessarily crave the, the love, but I think for me, there's just a, a huge um, importance on just really digging deep with your partner and just going deep, deep, deep with them, you know, and just like really seeing like the essence of their soul per se. Mm -hmm. Um, and having that deepness as a connection is really valuable to me. You know, like as a friend, there's a couple of friends that like, like you, like we can get like very deep together and like, there's that connection because of that. And that's really important. But you know, for my partner, that's also what I want to have. I want to have depth in, in knowing her, you know, just really knowing her and she knows me, you know, and having that connection, I think is, the most important thing for a relationship for me. I agree with that. I think that's pretty important too. Um, I don't, I, I will never be in a relationship that doesn't have both the connection and the intimacy. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately I know those exist. Yeah. It's a hard world out there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> How do you do multiple shows as a natural without taking your test long term? That shit's hard. Yeah. You got an input? Um, <laughs> I, it's it's hard because you go on a show, you have to do a, a blasting cycle. You know, yep. you don't have to, but to be able to compete, competi like be competitive in it. Well, he's, he's saying, how do you do multiple shows as a natural without tanking your test? Oh, as long a natural, term. tanking. Okay, without tanking um, your test. Well, the thing is with, with your testosterone when you are prepping for a show, you know the 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 deficit of your calories is obviously going to lower your testosterone, but that's a very acute lowered. You know, like it's going to be low just during the deficit. Um, and given the recovery is proper and you're able to come, you know, reverse diet properly and your habits still in check, your training still in check. I mean, that testosterone is going to rebound. Um, so it's, it's more of an acute 
sense of your testosterone lowering, it shouldn't be necessarily an issue long term, at least in my eyes. Um, I kind of disagree with that a little bit. Okay. I think uh, taking doing multiple te- multiple shows as a natural is going to test your tank long term until you take the precautions um, to come back. Uh, and it, the fact of the matter is every time you're getting lean, you're taking your test quite a lot. Every time you get that lean for a show, you're going to tank your test a fuck ton. Yeah, it's going to be a test. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, you just you just can't do them in a row. You just can't. Can like, you shouldn't be. Well, yeah, like, that's to be you, you, you could maybe do, like, two shows in a row that, like, as long as they're within weeks of each other, right? Like, say that's, like, a week back to back like you did one show yeah. and then the next weekend you did a natural show and then the next weekend you did another natural show so that way you're only like you know two three weeks at your most shredded state mm-hmm. like your most shredded state ever mm-hmm. which at that state you're going to have your most tank testosterone ever mm-hmm. um but which also is going to relate to the most tanked estrogen, which is also going to relate to your most tanked um growth hormone igf1 yeah. You know, like there's just no, there's no good things in terms of growth when it comes to being that lean. Yeah. Uh, but if the shows are a lot farther apart, I really don't think it's a good idea to be that shredded for months. You, can't. Uh, you just can't. Yeah, you have to bulk. If you're naturally, you, you just gotta, can't. You got to go on bulking cycles. Eat yeah, food, you have to. Sure you have to. Yeah. It's the only way. Yeah. That's that's what that's what that's the game for the naturals. Yeah. The hard thing for the naturals is like the having to like maintain your health by doing all the natural stuff. The hard thing for the uh, PDers is having to be on the PDs that fucking wreck your brain and wreck your organs and make you feel like absolute dog shit and yeah. almost kill you in the end. So and pick your it's poison. hard both ways. Yeah, pick your poison. <laughs> That's why we love it. <laughs> Stay hard, bro. Would you rather sit on a large banana vertically or gain twenty percent body fat? <laughs> I mean, how large is ah, that's a hard question. Large banana. Would you rather fat. sit? I'll sit on the banana vertically because my glutes are so striated. They'll crush the banana. Yeah, we're just gonna crush that shit. Yeah, just puck up your ass, crush it. Yeah. You're good. yeah. If the banana had to go in my butthole, then I would probably gain 20% body fat. That's fair. And then I'll cut down the 20% body fat again later. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. I'd rather go through the work of cutting the 20% body fat than actually having that shit go up <laughs> my ass. What What's your exercise for jaw? For jaw? <laughs> a little rave game? Yeah. Going to the... Lock jaw? Molly lock jaw. Going to a little subtronics next weekend? Mm-hmm. Last, l- last run for the boys before I leave? Yeah. That's going to be fun, dude. Yeah. I don't know. It's been a minute since a real rave, so that would be cool. I know, man. It's been a while, dude. I just, yeah. Um, honestly, dude, I, I don't think there's a way for you to really work out the jaw. No. I mean, like, you could, like. It's a muscle. I guess you can do that jaws or size thing. Dude, <laughs> dude, I just, I don't really believe in jaws or size. I, yeah. If you want to have a, I don't know what to say, chew gum. <laughs> chew gum, dude. What's, uh, what's your full diet plan in a day? Uh, let's just do that one really, really quickly. Um, I primarily eat chicken breast, salmon, uh, Brussels sprouts, asparagus, fruits such as apples, grapefruits, and frozen grapes because frozen grapes are fun to snack on. I'll have chips like uh, grain-free chips cooked in avocado oil or rice cakes if I do need extra carbs, but most of the time I never need those extra carbs. I just eat the carbs and carrots, the, the fruits, and the veggies. Um, and then I'll have some avocados on the side if I need extra fats. Normally, if I have the chips and then I have like some salmon, then I don't really need that much avocado. Mm. And then the sugar-free drinks. Yeah, naturally. Yeah. That's good, bro. Oh, and a uh, super carb in Formula 12 for the intro workout. Like I'm drinking a little bit of both of those right now mm. just for the fast carbs and the glycogen to my brain and, and yeah. a somewhat fasted state, more so like a, a state where I'm not digesting food. That's nice. Yeah, it's nice. Mm. Wow. That's nice. I'm pretty simple. Chicken rice, oatmeal, protein, um, grapes for carbs is always good. And then my fats are usually just nuts or avocados. Um, yeah. I, yeah, I did forget about my protein. I also, I drink like a couple of scoops of protein a day, like maybe three sometimes yeah. because I just, sometimes I don't want to digest chicken breast in the Simply. middle of the day, bro. Yeah. Like I don't, I want to like keep working. I want to have, because if you're eating too much protein, 
if you eat too much protein at once, then a lot of that blood is going to go into your gut, mm-hmm. um, uh, which is thus going to take away focus from, you know, your brain. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I said focus from your brain. It's going to take away focus. Yeah. So um, it's easier to drink something like whey isolate or just like a whey protein that I'll drink from huge or mm-hmm. I'll like make huge as vegan protein into like a pudding by nice. putting a lot less water or like oat milk. And then it's like a pudding with like cinnamon toast crunch pieces in it. It's fucking nice, dank. Nice, it's so nice. dank. Uh, what were what were Nathan's feeling the few out the few weeks out from his first show? I feel like shit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I felt bad, dude. I couldn't sleep. Um, my fight or flight was on constantly. Um, you know, the, the calorie deficit and the lack of sleep was definitely dipping in my energy. I felt pretty bad, man. To be honest, you know, the last week when I started refeeding, I felt a lot better, but. Um, I mean, you know, your body's kind of fighting at that point. You're in such a strict deficit. Your body fat's so low. My estrogen was low. Um, yeah. So, you know, overall, not a very pleasant experience. I'm so sorry, bro. Yeah. It's, it comes with the territory. Yeah. Yeah. I, I truly believe though, I think Nathan and I are going to do a massive bulk first. We're going to just get huge. Yeah. And I truly believe that the fire will come back for you someday. Yeah. I think it will. Yeah, probably. If it doesn't, that's okay, bro. But I'm going to tell you, you have the craziest fucking potential. No, the craziest, bro. You're built for this shit. <laughs> You're straight NFL yeah. linebacker. It'll probably come back. Um, <laughs> dude, this is a funny question. Yell banana 14 asks, how many bananas do I have to eat to get a physique as sick as that king? <laughs> he's, def- he's talking about you. <laughs> um, many, many fucking bananas. <laughs> you got to inject them with trend. You're chilling. <laughs> Someone asked the T3, T4 experiences. We answered that earlier in the beginning. Yeah. Um, <laughs> would you rather die young and jacked or old and skinny? Old and skinny. <laughs> I'm trying to get my ears in, man. Yeah, yeah. Probably old and skinny. Yeah. Um, I'll be jacked in the middle of my, my years anyways. Yeah. Well, you get yeah, it. yeah. Yeah. I don't if, I, if I get when skinny when I get older, I'm going to be doing other things when I'm old. Yeah, dude. That's like the wise years. What is the piercing on your lip called? Is it a fake ring? <laughs> Bro, you think, it, you think it's out. a fake ring I just smack on? Every, why do? Why would people think it's fake? Why, are they too... Yeah. <laughs> just rip it out. Show them. Are they too scared to like actually get a piercing? <laughs> um, it's called a uh, snake bite or a lip ring. Diet plane of both of you. Weird. Nathan's opinion on going to classic division. He has the look. I know, bro. He yeah, does. Bro, if I do compete again, I'm definitely going to switch to classic. Um, ultimately, that's what I'm going to do. It's just physique's easier to get my toes wet for the posing. But yeah, I think it's an initial, It's eventually going right. to transition po- to classic. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Okay. How to stay motivated when everything is stacked up against you all time low? I'll answer this one. I got a great one for this one. Um, how to stay motivated when everything is stacked up against you all time low? So, brother, it is all about you executing and executing to maximize your health in your life. So in the morning, wake up early in the morning, set an alarm, go outside, get yourself some daylight, look straight, <laughs> look straight at the sun, um, get yourself some cardio, do some fasted exercise. It doesn't necessarily have to be fasted, but start your day with some exercise in the morning and with some daylight and you will start getting your natural dopamine running. Yes. This will also help your testosterone level, especially if you're natural, of course, um, which will thus also help your motivation and your drive. Do that, come back, make sure you eat healthy meals, healthy meals with omega-3s. Omega-3s are very important for your brain and for your mood and your happiness, which is why it's important to eat good fats like that. Um, You know, eat fiber as well. Fiber is a very, very important part of our diet. A lot of the reason why a lot of things, um, uh, this was some research Lane Norton talked about, it's way too long for me to explain, but essentially if you want to simplify things, uh, the things with more fiber tend to be the things that um, are more healthy for you in the yep. long run. Yep. This will lead you to help you be healthier and happier as well. Um, all these things that come with health, I think, are super important when you st- it, important when it comes to drive. Mm-hmm. Now, motivation. I think motivation, you can be motivated at any time in any point in life. You can watch a video and you feel motivated. But the fact of the matter is if you're not doing it and executing, then it doesn't exist. Yeah. Whatever it is that you want to do, doesn't. it's not there. Like it's a dream. Maybe it's a vision from God that you want to like compete or you want to like complete this task that's so um, uh, valuable. But 
in the end, all that matters is execution. Um, and something that I love that's from, uh, who are we talking about earlier? The podcaster that's super hardcore. That was in the Jocko. Navy. Jocko. Jocko. So uh, a quote from Jocko Willink that I love every single day. I I'm, I think about it every single morning is um, discipline eats motivation for breakfast. It's not about motivation. It's about doing the shit that you don't want to yeah. do uh-huh. when you need to do it. Mm-hmm. So wake up in the morning, get that shit in, be healthy, and then start executing whatever it is that you want to execute. Whether it just be going to the gym, just walk to the gym, do a set. You don't have to, don't don't even anticipate doing the whole workout. Just anticipate going to the gym, doing the first set. The moment you've already done that, warmed up, done the first set, you're a little bit warmer, you start feeling a little bit better. Mm-hmm. 30 minutes into doing the warm up, or 15, 30, 15 minutes, honestly, into doing the warm up, you feel like a little bit more of a drive. Like, this is kind of fun. I'm like, it's kind of nice to like at least look at myself in the mirror and get a pump on. I'm starting to feel a little bit better. Mm-hmm. And then 15 more minutes and you feel even better. And then all of a sudden, before you know it, sometimes you actually want to complete the rest of the fucking workout. Nice. So all that matters is you stepping in there, executing. That's solid. Are you allowed to say your um, body count? Is that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was one of the questions. Yeah, dude, body count. uh, It's pretty low, man. I don't get around too much. I think it's it's, it's like six. Six? It's six. Yeah. (laughs) Six on my belt. Damn. Is it really? Yeah. It's low. Oh, shit, bro. Mine's pretty high. Uh, I kind of feel bad talking about it. <laughs> well, here's the thing is my body count the last couple of years has been very, very low. I've been a lot more picky and I just haven't been interested uh, mm. like I used to. But back then I was in a fraternity in college. So um, my younger years, I did a lot. So it's 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 somewhere in somewhere in some somewhere near 100. Damn. But good shit. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I would be i would be lying if i said that there was a couple in there that i didn't regret so yeah um but whatever you know live and learn yeah we change every day and uh i'm definitely different than i was 10 years ago um when do you personally know you've hit your dream bot or you just keep going man it just comes to your own fulfillment you know it's different for everyone i think whatever you would push for over the point where you feel like you've you know proved what you want to prove um that's good. I mean, for some people it's never enough. So it really just comes down to what your fulfillment is and just being realistic to, you know, what you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think being realistic is probably the most important thing. You know, you don't want this grandiose idea of, well, I'm going to become the next top Mr. Olympian. You know, if that's not necessarily what you want to shoot for, if that's not the, you know, the risk that you want to play, because there are risks that come with that, obviously, you know, huge sacrifices. So that's that's big, big, big sacrifices Mm -hmm. for sure. Trade-offs lifetime trade-offs um i actually i actually believe that i uh, found my dream bot um at one point and i was just really happy with my physique and i am happy with my physique right now but uh i think um guys that are climbing always want more and i think that's common and now i want to you know go on the olympia stage Mm. and try to win that shit so not because i want that dream bod like i don't want to put that body on me and feel like i'll feel more confident i feel confident in the body i have now it's purely because of the sport Mm -hmm. um uh can you do a top 10 people in the industry that you respect and appreciate uh that's kind of a lot you want to do like a i don't know do you have any like a top two top one top three uh derek love me some Derek. oh more plates yeah. oh yeah same yeah, yeah Derek's sick. same yeah Derek is super sick and then also uh i'm uh, i'm gonna be doing a podcast with him soon but goku flex hey. one of the ogs uh asian ogs i will remember watching when i was a kid him that's and matt sick. ogus that's sick yeah. man and oh, the, yeah. i also listened to jeff nippard's podcast ice cream for prs back before he did like those youtube videos mm-hmm. um is 120 milligrams test E enough to gain on? I have been told even 200 milligrams is low. Bro, 200 milligrams is not low. 200 milligrams is a very high TRT pseudo level. Blast. A high TRT yeah. level. Yeah, like a pseudo blast. Um, it, it, dude, you have to... It's so subjective this, though. Like, I don't want to be a dick, but it sounds to me like you probably haven't gotten your blood work done. Um, if you're asking this, yeah. you will know if it's enough to gain on if you've gotten your blood work done and you see that 120 milligrams of test is bringing your natural test higher than it used to be. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm struggling with mass gain and have even started focusing range of motion. Any tips? 
Focusing range of motion is amazing, but if you're struggling with mass gain, I find that diet is the biggest factor. Oh. Diet and volume of your workouts. Yeah. 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 Stimulation, proper stimulation. Maybe they're not hitting enough volume too. Mm-hmm. Um, HPBD. What is permanent HPBD? Um, okay. What is your routine to combat hair loss? I talked about this in my last podcast with Cameron, so um, check that one out there. Uh, what is the best way to get rid of belly fat? Uh, you can't really target just belly fat. I mean, it's pretty impossible. People say you do crunches to burn body fat. That's, that's complete pseudo. Um, really everyone has different genetic propensities for what part of their body goes down first and what goes down last. So for some people, it's their legs that goes last. Some people, it's their hips. Some people, it's their back. Some people, it's their stomach. Um, so it's just being realistic to what your genetic propensities are and getting down to whatever body fat that means for your stomach to, you know, shred up, start seeing some ab definition. Right. Yeah. And then I, I was just thinking about this cause I wanted to say this in the last question, but I didn't get to. So when the person asked, um, at an all time low, uh, motivation, like how do you stay motivated and all that stuff? Um, I forgot to say that all this stuff was also from my perspective. Like I felt a lot better when I would wake up in the morning and literally look at the daylight, do my cardio in the morning yeah. as well as start eating healthier. When I wasn't on tests and I wasn't on TRT or any PDs and then even when I was. So it made a difference no matter what, mm-hmm. regardless. Mm-hmm. Uh, I personally felt that. So that's a great way to like help, help you execute. Yeah. Um, do you need to get off test after a blast or can you just cruise and blast again? It's up to your goals, man. It's really up to what you want. Um, you know, you have to understand if you blast and cruise, that's life potentially lifetime lifetime uh, testosterone suppression. So if you were to do a blast and you just come off, given that you're not taking like a 19 nors like Trin or Deca, um, and you come off properly with a PCT, you should expect to get, you know, close to full recovery. But if you're on a blast and cruise for years and you come off, um, odds are it's going to be a really hard road to get your testosterone back to normal naturally. Right. Um, and a blast and cruise is essentially just TRT while adding while cycling PEDs periodically. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you're a bodybuilder, then you're on TRT and you're cycling PEDs. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't really know any actual competitive, like pro bodybuilders that like actually fully come off cycle. I don't like once you've jumped on, you're in the dark side and you've affected your, your balls. Yeah. Um, if it's longer than a few weeks, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm um, this one's for you. Uh, Easy meal preps for a dirty bulk. I can afford the extra calories from a hyperthyroid. This one's definitely for Nathan. Yeah, so if, it's, if you're trying to do an easy bulk, it's really just coming down to um, just stuff that's the most nutrient-dense. Um, and obviously given, you know, health healthy foods. So nutrient-dense foods is going to be stuff like, you know, obviously white rice is really nutrient-dense. Um, anything that's high in fats is going to be nutrient-dense, like nuts, avocados. Um, that's going to be the most nutrient-dense macros is, is fats. And really just getting your adequate protein. So 1 to 1.5 grams per pound of lead body mass is really important. Um, and, you know, in terms of actually getting that food in, I would say try to space out your meals as much as possible. So have the most amount of meals you can get instead of just eating really big meals. And you should be good to go, bro. Just trying to get those calories in. Yep. All right. And Nathan's got a dip. Yeah. Yeah. That was good, dude. Yeah, it was solid. But thank you guys for uh, listening. This is Nathan Brooks. You can follow him on Nathan Brooks One. What, what's our other socials? Uh, Nathan Brooks One on Instagram. Brooks Built on TikTok. Nice, yes, sir. No Fuck YouTube yeah. yet. He's gonna come out with the YouTube though for sure. Yeah. Because this guy's about to make a fucking impact on the world. Yeah. 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 So thanks again, guys. Um, uh, best non-money way to support the podcast, um, money free way, <laughs> is to like. Uh, subscribe to the Spotify, the YouTube, um, and also uh, please rate us a five stars on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. So thank you guys. Appreciate yeah. it. Oh. Peace.